Okay, malignant assets, primary site unknown. Okay, this, this was kind of interesting because it wasn't exactly, um, uh, I think a lot of people don't understand what assets are. But the question was, I'm having a disagreement with a fellow coworker. Um, it states under 789.51 that you are to code the primary and or secondary malignancy first, and it states 197.6 for the secondary malignant neoplasm of retroperitoneum and peritoneum. So I think it's 197.6 and 199.1. Please help. Okay, so I kind of broke this down. I like doing that. Well, if you guys go to this this website and it's howjsay.com and you put in the word, it'll pronounce it for you. But let me tell you something that I learned from sign language school. You never tell a medical professional. So don't walk up to a doctor and if he pronounces it like Lorraine does or he pronounces it like I do, never correct them. That is something you don't do. So regionally people pronounce things differently and you know, you just usually pick up where it's from. I like just saying S. I but was that a nice way of telling me off? <laughs> I guess. So we'll we'll just uh, we'll just I won't say the word again. That's okay. It's gonna they get humor. Now they know uh, seven eight nine the same thing. Yes, we are talking about the same thing. Seven eight nine point five one. Okay, it does when you look at this code, code the malignancy such as the, the neoplasm for and over, and it gives you these suggestions. Okay, so um, that tells you when it's a guideline, you want to always pay attention to these guidelines. This is how the AAPC, when they form the test, they you know they know you have to look know how to look up a code. What they want to know is can you follow these rules and these guidelines? That's what they're testing you on. So if you see a code first, that means there better be a code in front of seven eight nine point five one, or you're going to code it wrong. So real quick a little bit of information about what this is. A malignant ascites is the normal accumulation of fluid, uh, excuse me, an abnormal accumulation of fluid containing cancer cells in the peritoneal cavity. So in other words, it's just filling up the abdominal cavity more or less with fluid. This kind of ascites can be due to the metastatic spread of a malignancy in the peritoneal cavity, but it may also be due to a primary malignancy elsewhere, such as the ovary. This usually denotes a late stage of cancer. The most common symptoms are distended abdomen with pain, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, low blood pressure, weakness, fatigue. Fluid is sampled by uh, paracentesis. They just go in and draw some of it out and may be drained or chemotherapy may be injected and a diuretic medication given because your body can actually absorb uh, absorb this fluid. But um, later in this, uh, I've got a picture of somebody that has that. But if you're, as a coder, all of these things, you may not know a lot about um, ascites, but when you're coding, you need to know all of that stuff that can be a, a, a symptom of it because you usually have to draw parallel lines. And so if we scroll down a little bit, these are things you kind of need to know about. It. The related malignancy should be coded first, right? So let's scroll down a little bit more. And um, the, she had asked uh, about 199.1. For anybody that's new to coding, when you first start doing the ICD-9 and they get into the cancer codes, this is what I like to call as a default code. And this, D, this is also part of the guidelines. If uh, cancer is mentioned and you can have a primary and secondary cancer, if you don't know what the primary and secondary cancer is, but you know there is one because it's mentioned, that you know the person had cancer uh, 12 years ago and uh, now shows uh, now it has been diagnosed with lung cancer. Well, you show that it's a secondary cancer by you can use this primary, secondary, uh, uh, either way. 
okay? So in other words, there was somebody came in and said, um, you know, uh, your patient had uh, lung cancer 20 years ago, was treated and was in remission, but uh, was just diagnosed with cancer again. Well, you don't know what the secondary cancer is, so it would be, you would use 199.1. So it can be listed uh, first or second, you know. Okay, so you use this code for malignant neoplasms of unspecified site, both primary and secondary. Okay, 197.6 is the one that, that was mentioned in the question, and that is the code for a secondary malignancy. Now, keep it. 197.6 in the description tells you it's a secondary cancer. Now, you think, some people think, oh, well, then it's listed second. No, it could be listed first if that's the cancer that's being treated. So if your patient came in for this secondary uh, uh, cancer, the 197.6, but you don't know what the primary cancer is, then you're going to list 197.6 and 199.1 because you don't know what the, the first one is. But you always list first the cancer that's being treated. Okay, So let's scroll down. It, from what uh, was being said in the question, I would have listed at 197.6, 199.1, 789.1, and that's telling the payer that you know your your patient came in and is being seen by the secondary cancer. I don't know what the primary cancer is, but now you know, and and they have these malignant ascites. Now, if they're being treated for the malignant ascites, then um, you know you could put that 700 code of guess in front of there, but um, no, that's 789.51. We're having trouble getting everything you're saying. We're getting a little static. Oh, am I talking too fast? No, no, I think it might be your phone line. Um, try oh, try I'm that gonna... sentence again, sorry. Okay, so if 789.51 is why they're being seen, there still is a guideline that tells you first to code what the cancer is, which is 197.6. So it's 789.51 is not going to be listed first because it tells you not to do that. So if you scroll down just a little bit, we have a picture of what it looks like. Yikes. We're not, we're not getting you, hon. Scroll. More? There we go. There we go. Now, this was an interesting note that I pulled off the website that I got this picture off of. And your belly button doesn't necessarily stick out loud. Think about it. Your abdomen is literally filling up with fluid. So malignancy accounts for around 15% of these causes of the, uh, the ascites like that. And then it lists a few of them. And you can get those on the Replay Club or, or when you get the uh, recording of this for everybody that was here. It'll, but it was just an interesting thing. If anybody's seen this, you're usually a, a real scrawny person and they've got this giant belly like they're, you know, 12 months pregnant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yikes. Okay. And then just other diseases that will, disease processes that call, can cause that. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.